Hey, thanks for joining me, The Dragon, Blood and Guts. So if you've been watching my channel, I often mention how much I think Savage Dragon uh, has been one of the best comics ever made. Definitely the best Image comic out of all the original Founding Father guys from Image. Um, Eric Larson's a guy who knew to write a story. He knew how to write a story, and he has a very clear vision of who his character is and what he does and his motivations and where he's going, because this is a character that Eric Larson has had with him since, a ch since he was a child. And I get the feeling that most of the other Image comic guys, I don't feel like, I don't think, I mean, I, I don't know. I was going to say I don't think Jim Lee had Wildcats since he was a kid, but now that I think about it, Maybe he did say that. I don't think uh, Cyber Force was anything Mark Silvestri had for the long term. I think it was originally an X-Men pitch. I don't think Will Spertasio had Wetworks. I mean, McFarlane says he's had Spawn for a while, but I don't know. Um, I do believe Liefeld and Youngblood uh, in some iteration or the other. I don't think Valentino's Shadowhawk was a character that he'd had around forever because Shadowhawk doesn't really seem like a Valentino character. It felt like that was a response to the era and trying to make something that would fit that. But anyway, Eric Larson's Dragon, he knew who exactly who that character was. And he'd do some spin-offs and miniseries and things like that. And some of them I feel like worked well. But I think the best one that worked the best is this one because it's got Jason Pearson on art. Jason Pearson wasn't the guy that I knew almost anything of until I saw this. I think I'd heard of Body Bags. Never, ever saw it on the shelves. Not once, not ever. And um, as I started to learn to pay attention to his art, I'm like, okay, he's he's different, but I kind of get it. His heavy use of shadows, his extreme understanding, his good understanding of human form, and then pushing it into a stylized kind of exaggerated look. He definitely knows the human figure, and then he knows how to then push it into weird abstraction that looks good and his use of shadows god he's he's just absolutely fantastic and i just i could never find his work but this dragon blood and guts miniseries that was on the shelves i was able to find it though i don't think i, I got it until i ended up getting this collected miniseries later i'm trying to remember if i actually had the individual issues it's been so long i can't remember but anyway so jason pearson i believe he's writer and penciler and I got to shout out Carl Story on inks. I just recently reviewed this book and we had Carl Story doing inks over Chris Sprouse. And I got Carl Story inking over Jason Pearson. And I was mentioning a little bit in Ocean over there. I, at least I think I did. Uh, it's hard for me to remember because I rambled on about that book for more than an hour. But um, Carl Story has a really fine, sharp, crisp control of the ink line. And I love it. And I wish that I could replicate what he does with my own inking. It is hard. And um, I will get into some places where I'll, I'll talk about what I mean. But as a quick example, like if I throw down a piece of paper here, I'm going to do an extreme example. Like when you see an ink line, let's bring this up close here. If you can see some of these ink lines. Like if you have a shadowed shape, like if this is a shadowed shape like this and it's dark and you want to have some feathering lines coming into it, like often a pencil will just, you know, throw some lines down like that and then, you know, it's supposed to be shadowed in and then, that you know, you have to like make those lines, you have to ink those lines. But what you end up wanting to do is have them being kind of feathered where they're, they start out from a sharp point on the outside and then get wider as they kind of blend into the dark shape, if that makes sense. And now again, this is an extreme close-up example and it's not crystal clear or sharp at all, but you, you, you're trying to get something like that, a sharp, clean line where it's kind of uniform from where they start going from thin to thick. I remember I, at a comic convention, I ran into inker Dexter Vines and he explained to me that when you do these lines, you need to start from the thin point and go to the thicker part, which was totally backwards of what I thought you would do. I thought you'd want to start from the thick point and have your line come out to a, a, a point like that as you complete your brush stroke, which you can do. But his, his um, advice to me is like, I don't know where that brush is going to go. That thing could come along and then tail off to the, uh, you know, go off on a weird angle like that. He's like, start from the thin point 
and go into it and make it thick. And so I started practicing that. And um, I've gotten better at it. You know, when you bust out your inking tool, see if I can embarrass myself by trying it. But like you get here and See, there's kind of a quick example of going thin to thick, and then you can have it blackened in. That's kind of like a super quick example. But then another thing that this Carl story does, I'm sorry, I know we're here for the book, right? We're not here for an art lesson, but whatever, it's my channel. Um, we'll have ink lines out in the middle of a form where they go from thin to thick and then back down to a thin again like this if this makes sense. Again, this is like a super close-up of it, where he starts out thin, gets thick, and then it sharpens again. And he'll do it in repeating patterns. And I, I again, I, not this huge, but I don't understand how he gets these sharp ink lines that are like that if it's like two strokes, if he comes in from one side and then back from the other into it, or he just got such a sharp control that he can start thin, go thick, and then reduce it to thin again. It's kind of like that. Except mine are wobbly and gross and I got this camera in my way. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Little mini art lesson right there from not a great artist, me. But all that to say, this Carl story has some really sharp inks and it looks fantastic over Jason Pearson's work. So we'll get into some of that in this book as we go. But like, here's some examples of that kind of inking. Uh, let's see if this thing will focus on it close enough. If you can see some of these ink lines and the sharp control that he's got. And Jason Pearson's work, like his storytelling is like, he, he has, he has all the tools that artists needs. He deserved to be in the mainstream spotlight more. I don't know why he didn't. Um, Jason Pearson has died a couple of years ago. I followed him on his social media and I don't know how else to say this. He seemed like an angry guy. He was angry and dejected and kind of bitter all the time. From what I recall, incredibly talented. And I just wonder if he had a hard time meeting deadlines, if he wasn't very fast he was really good and his artwork makes use of like hard angles on shapes that you wouldn't think would work but man like look at these sharp angles on the muscles on this arm and the razor sharp elbow there but he can draw backgrounds he can draw regular looking people he can draw big muscular characters he can draw guns and technology and buildings and backgrounds and muscular anatomy and hot babes but very stylized he's got it all jason pearson could do it all um, this guy, he should have, he should have been extremely wealthy and had a bigger career. I'm not exactly sure what happened. The basic premise of the story is that there was a court case, I think, and, um, somebody was like a witness to some mob bosses or something like that. And they got to protect this person is the setup. And then we get into this come out not too long after the original Dragon miniseries. And if you don't know, I've already reviewed the Dragon miniseries, the first three issues on the channel. Um, you know, Dragon was introduced, he was found, he had no memory, so he joins up the police force. He met this hot blonde girl that lived in his apartment complex. They, became, they had a brief relationship, and then she ended up shot in his doorway from some criminal coming to look for the Dragon. They knocked on Dragon's door, she answered instead of him, and then they just shot the first thing that opened the door and ended up killing her. So Dragon is going through some serious emotional turmoil that he was so stupid knowing that he's a cop with a lot of enemies that want him dead and he let his innocent young girlfriend open the door and she's dead and so this is kind of like a nightmare scenario that he's i think he's um god let me make sure he's describing it to somebody and it's, these are just visual representations of it and i tell you i can't get over how much i love like I was saying, Jason Pearson's use of heavy shadows and underlighting this rubble and debris, this great shot of dragon down here with this heavy shadows, um, basically a silhouette. Um, also, an important thing with dragon is getting that fin right. And he does. 
He gets it exactly correct, but then he's having this nightmare. He's like, he's dreaming of his girl, but then she's shot in the head, and now like her corpse is reaching up from hell to get him, flames and skeletons and shit. He's tortured and miserable. The coloring is really good. I should shout out the colorist in case uh, Ruben Rood and Antonia Cole. Uh, yeah, uh, good. I think the coloring works really good in this. And then it kind of melts down as he's fighting these undead people. And I guess Dragon himself burns away into these skeletal figures until he's just gone. And then it comes back to reality as he's just kind of explaining to his local... Or he's at his local bar explaining it to... Um, Alex Wilde is her name. She's a secondary character in the Dragon comics. She's a cop and kind of like a like a, a friend, but kind of a burgeoning romance between the two of them that kind of hasn't come to fruition at this point. Who knows if it will? I know because I've read every issue of Dragon. But he's just kind of explaining to his friend the suffering he's going through. And she's like, yeah, you're weird. He's like, God damn it. He's like, it's my responsibility. Take me serious. And... And um, she's just trying to talk him down from his anger and his sadness. And she's like, look, you might be super strong, but you're human. You made a mistake. You couldn't. You can't control everything. You can't feel bad for everyone's death. You can't feel responsible for everyone's death is the basic premise of the story going on here. So Dragon's Trouble, I think he's maybe thinking about quitting the cops, quitting the police force maybe. Um, another example of Jason Pearson's great drawing. I mean, there, in a way, like her lower area here, her um, from her waist down to these pants, she looks kind of flat and squished, but it still kind of works. He loves to draw these shoes and feet. He can just draw it all. He can draw everything. There's not one shortcut that I feel like Jason Pearson takes anywhere. And uh, he's just got a very stylized look. I love this T-shirt that the girl's wearing. That would be an awesome T-shirt with that design, like the skeleton, with like a hat and a cigarette and a wine glass. Is that like a real shirt? If it's not, it should be. Anyway, she's sick of him beating himself up. She's trying to get him out of his funk, trying to get him to, you know, get his head back in the game. And she's telling him, look, we need you and I believe in you. So if you're going to take off and leave, then fine, but you're leaving us. I love this basic background, but it works so well. This bar, very believable. And then this great splash page here. It's just all silhouette except dragon's giant green arms. It's an exaggeration of anatomy that Eric Larson does in the book all the time, where he exaggerates the proportions just to emphasize certain things about dragon and, and the Travis dragon will have like regular sized human body from basically the waist down but his upper chest and his arms are massively huge and it's hard for some artists to reinterpret that there's that jim lee drawn issue of dragon and jim lee did not get how to do it he did a terrible version it does not work um and jim lee is a great artist but he just he didn't get it there's a, an exaggeration that you have to do to make the dragon look right and jason pearson can totally get it he can get these big strong bulging pr proportions and make it work and that's what makes the dragon look correct even if it's not rooted in any real reality again heavy shadows and making these thick muscles roll into each other and fold into each other so good Love that shot. I wonder if there's any Jason Pearson original artwork out there to track down and buy. Speaking of, look at this. Great shot of this church, and the coloring is really good on this. And uh, we're inside there, and there's a bunch of dead bodies, bloody and gross. And this bad guy, he basically paid a hooker. Um, let's see. Yeah, she says, seen a lot of weird crap working in the streets of Chicago. It makes a girl jaded, but this is too gross, especially dead people, especially dead homeless people. They stink. She's like, so I want out now with my cash. So I guess he wanted to bang the hooker in the room in, in church where all these dead bodies are. And she's like, um, I ain't particularly interested in doing that. And so the bad guy's like, all right, takes her hand and then lights it up with electricity, fries her hand off. And then a bunch of other bad guys come out and then she's on the ground and he puts his hand on her face and basically blows her brains out. So our introduction to this villain, which is a new character, was not in the Dragon comic before. So I'm guessing this is a uh, Jason Pearson 
creation and you got to set him up to be evil. So he's, you know, how else do you be evil except by melting the head of a hooker that you're trying to bang? I mean, that's what I do, right? <clears throat> but anyway, um, they're, they're, they're setting up to get the woman who's under uh, police protection the next day. And meanwhile, the like the guy who runs the church, like he's hanging from his neck in the background. So again, not only blowing away a hooker, but killing a bunch of people in church. It's very sacrilegious. So he's very bad. We know that he's a bad man. Anyway, more of the story going on. What a great shot. Like, look at the city shot. That is Pearson putting in everything. Like, holy shit. Well, I don't know if he traced it off or something. I don't know. I don't care. But... Even if tracing it, that's involved. I mean, it would take a lot harder or a lot more time to do it by hand. I don't care, but it looks great. So, you know, it's the the girl who's the, the witness and they're trying to protect her. All this stuff is going on. Meanwhile, there's this like, it's Morty's Burger Emporium, basically a fast food joint. And everyone's kind of hanging out. And then you see this hand in the distance with a... Uh, it's like a vat of um, uh, like oil that they cook fries with. <clears throat> Goes into it, puts it over the top of the toilet stall, and you see the fin. So you know it's dragon. If you see the skin tone, you can kind of guess who it is. She dumps the oil, hot oil, on him, and he screams. And uh, she's like, what, you can't take a joke? Because I guess dragon got so pissed off that he leveled the... Uh, the the burger joint that he was at so it's just trying to interject some humor in there um it, it works it's fine you know she's like why are you so pissed off he's like nobody needed to pour hot grease over me but who's complaining anyway they need to get dragon back on the job you like let's see yeah um we we need dragon on the job we need him to help protect this lady that's in um, you know, under protection. And this guy, this scummy kind of guy, he's like, I'm beginning to wonder if Puff the Magic Dragon had enough balls to show up. Um, <clears throat> and then Alex and this girl, they happen to know each other. So there's a connection there. And everyone's arguing, but Dragon just freaks out. Now here's an example of that inking. Look at those sh nice, sharp, crisp ink lines going on through here. Just how everything does a nice feathering fade into the black shapes. So it's one Jason Pearson doing good penciling in shadows, but then, you know, the inker knowing how to translate that. Um, I don't know if Jason Pearson normally inked himself. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. I can't really speak on what his artwork looks like otherwise outside of uh, this Carl story inking him, but it works really well. I God, I wish I could see what the pencils look like. This is, I, it just, it works really well. It inspires me to want to get my ink lines like work like that. <clears throat> anyway, Dragon's pissed off because everyone's fighting. And, he, and so Dragon's yelling at everybody. He's like, while you're out looking for some historic event and you're out finding some past friendship, go look for a freak who can fill my spot because I quit. He gives up his gun and his badge. So he's decided that he's depressed from his girlfriend getting killed. He's going to quit the police force. And this is a big deal because they need – the reason that Dragon is on the police force is that he's super strong and super powerful but a good moral man. And so they need him – on the cops for us to give them a like a fighting chance against all the superpowered villains in the city. But Dragon's depressed and wanting to quit. And now he definitely is not interested in taking this protection job. And so <clears throat> this douchebag, who's some kind of higher up, he's telling him, like, you can't go anywhere until I say so. So Dragon's going to get his hand up to flick the guy in the face. Because no one tells Dragon what to do. Um, really well-drawn gun. That shit looks great. Anyway, he flicks him, sends the guy flying, but then this guy's got energy pouring out of his eyes. He's pissed off. So you're like, oh shit, has he got powers? And then, um, so the girl that needs the protection, she asks Dragon, she's like, would you just hear me out? Now look at this drawing from Jason Pearson. Look at how it comes down from the back of his head, his neck, and down to his shoulders and his back. You could basically put a ruler on that as a complete straight line. Let's test it, in fact. 
It's kind of hard with the book being folded up. But look at that shit. Like, I'm not exaggerating. It's just a straight fucking line. It works in Jason Pearson's stylized rendering. It looks like the head looks correct. That's thick and strong and muscular like the dragon should be and is. But somehow having a straight geometric shape. When you're drawing a human figure, there should never be a straight rigid line like that anywhere. But when you're doing stylized work like this, it works somehow. It's so weird. <clears throat> and uh, not many people can pull that off. And so Dragon's like, look, I don't want to hear it. You married a murderer. You made your bed. Now go die in it. And um, she says, you don't understand. It's not just me. And so Dragon's leaving. And Alex is like, God damn it, Dragon. What's How can you walk away from this? Like, you're this woman's only chance. <clears throat> and he just leaves. He's gone. He's depressed and being kind of a loser right now. And this poor woman's kind of stuck. So anyway, he's going to take off. He's pissed off. Someone else comes along and kind of has a chat with him, trying to talk him into like, come on, don't give up. Let's, let's, let's help. Back to the bad guys. They're in church. They're making their plans to get the girl. He's like, I want no survivors, no hesitation, no exceptions. Well-drawn weapons everywhere. Looks fucking fantastic. And then somebody else bursts into the church with all the dead bodies and we all look, and they're all having a conversation. And this guy, who we th we've seen and we thought was maybe on our side, but he's actually working with the bad guys. And they're like, the best part is that Dragon Freak is no-go on, on the show. He quit the force. So there was kind of a concern. Well, Dragon, we might have to contend with the Dragon. But they're like, he quit. So like, oh, good. Well, one, lucky for him, because this bad guy's like, so now I won't have to kill his ass. But this will make their job a lot easier. So that was the end of issue one, obviously, to be continued. Issue two, love this cover. A big close-up of an angry, teeth-gritted face. I mean, this is every other Rob Liefeld cover, right? But I'm sorry, this is a better version of it by far, in my opinion. Great shadows, great lighting, um, sharp inks everywhere. And then this great shot, big splash page, the coloring to a lightning bolt in the distance. I think it works really well. Again, Pearson, look at him drawing cars and everything. He can draw everything. Or I guess I should say he used to be able to. It really sucks that he passed away. It's I just wish we got more work from him. But everyone's on this postal express, but it's it's uh you know a vehicle in disguise while they're transporting this woman, trying to protect her. But um, there's clearly going to be like a, a leak, a, a snitch to let everyone know. I always like this panel where the lightning strike kind of highly illuminated this because it was one of the few times I could see at the time. Because let me see, this was printed in. Um, 96? So a little bit after Dragon was going already. But it's almost like a black and white drawing, like seeing just the raw inks without the color, which I wanted to see so much. So I kind of studied the chunky shapes on that hair and how it was rendered. Um, I always, that always stuck out to me, but they're sitting here. And this is funny. This guy's like picking his nose. So they're all just kind of like on the job. They're worried. They're scared. Dragon's not with them, right? He quit the force. So everyone's kind of scared and nervous. If something goes wrong, this could be bad. But then the, they're sitting in the back of the van and the, there's sliding door from the, the driver's section of the van. It slides open. Fuck yeah, Dragon is there. He decided to be there. And again, look at these hard, sharp angles on these geometric shapes that Jason Pearson does. It shouldn't work, but it does. And again, he's in his tight jeans, rolled up at the bottom in these giant shoes. It's kind of funny to me. It works. And then look at the silhouette here. It's almost like right angles. Up, straight over, up, straight over, down. It's so ridiculous. I, my brain, if I were drawing... I think it works because it's Jason Pearson, but I would never be able to let that go. I would have to have some round shapes. It's it's almost too far for me. It works here. I don't think it works here, but what the hell do I know? Again, look at this sharp angle on the top of Dragon's head. He's almost boxed off like a square. It feels like Jason Pearson is just pushing these geometric shapes with every panel just to see how far he can push it. It makes it stand out, but it looks good. So anyway, Dragon's here. Now, this guy's pissed off because he thought Dragon bailed on him. Now, I think this guy's a bad guy. 
And so he's just like, oh, well, dragon's not here, so we're fine. But now the dragon's there, and so it fucked him up. He's like, what the hell gives you the right to assert my command, you green trash grunt freak? And dragon's like, I do. I'm just, yeah. We're going to take care of this girl. We're going to solve this problem. He got his head back in the game. Good for him. Anyway, as this is all going on, a bunch of these bad, all the bad guys, the one electric fist guy and his minions come along on motorcycles. Now, this is one of my favorite scenes in this book because Jason Pearson, not only can he draw everything like I've talked about, but drawing vehicles is one, but then drawing a good car chase scene is got to be, in my mind, one of the hardest things to pull off. And he does it so damn good. Here they are on motorcycles. I feel like they're really going fast, speeding. They hit the center wall divider, ramp up it. And then I love this panel here where like this guy up top, he's just like, you can just hear that motor of that, that motorcycle. It's like, mm, as they zip over this thing, great angle. And then um, he slams down, bails on his bike and grabs onto the... Uh, the, the van, another guy starts unloading bullets on, kills the driver because that's what you do. You even see the reflection of the guy shooting in the rear view mirror here, killing the driver. Glass explodes. The van starts, you know, going out of control. They shoot through the glass in the back and just start firing inside of it, hitting some people. Dragon uh, covers the girl because he's bulletproof. So then bad guy sticks his head in there and he's like, is anyone alive? And of course, Alex Wild, for some reason, somehow she's still alive. So she puts the gun up, boom, shoots him in the head. He drops to the ground and they, they say his name is Snoopy, N-O-S-N-O-O-P-I. And they're like, cripes, they got Snoopy. And they're like, avenge Snoopy as they like ramp off his dead body. I laughed at that shit. This is Jason Pearson and his silly kind of sense of humor. That shit is hilarious. And so, like, they shot Snoopy. Avenge Snoopy. But don't as they bump over his body. Great motion. Great, perfect-looking motorcycles. So goddamn good. It's funny to have this kind of sense of humor. That's the thing with the Dragon comic that Eric Larson does. It will go back and forth between deadly serious and very funny. And somehow he made that balance work. Not a lot of people can do that. But he can. Anyway, another bad guy. He's reaching in. Uh, the lady's like, Jesus, somebody's up front. Dragon looks and sees. <clears throat> uh, bad guy threw a bomb inside is what he did. So they're like, shit. So Dragon sees that. It's a bomb. Covers them. Van explodes. Good explosion. There's Dragon standing in the smoke. The girl they're protecting is good. And of course, somehow Alex survives. And then all the bad guys, they just start unloading their giant machine guns and handguns. And they all scream, die at the same time. They're like, die, die, die. Dragon's getting just riddled with bullets and his hand comes forward with his own giant gun and blows giant holes through their heads. Fantastic. So he's just standing there with his clothes all shredded, which happened a lot in the Dragon comics. But then out of the blue comes the leader of the bad guys. Whatever this guy is, big squared off feet, big powerful, like look again, blocky shape for the arms. I also like this blur, like inking line work that they did on the end of the fist that's punching dragon. Those line works to uh, indicate like a motion blur. <clears throat> he shows up, Alex and the girl are diving out of the way. You know, we're gonna fight. So then bad guy, he's like, you killed my dogs, punk. Should have stayed smart and stayed out of the way. So he's charging up his electric hand and um, so Alex from behind, she gets her gun out and she's like telling him to freeze, but then she gets shot. One of the bad guys has survived this and he shot her and he should have shot her in the head or the back or anything, but he shoots her just barely in the shoulder to stop her. Then so bad guy raises his hand in the air, puts it down on Dragon's face and like electrocutes his face and it hurt Dragon. Like Dragon's tough as shit. And he, the bad guy even says, tough noggin, huh? Like this guy, he, he took it and he's still alive. So then he's like saying, where did you find these guys, honey? This guy here knows this girl. So they put a gun to her head. And um, this is the thing. I guess she was going to testify against him. And uh, he's like, "Why, Alicia, why do you have to continue to rip out my heart? Did you think you could escape me? So... Um, uh, Right. It's oh, yeah. So th this girl, um, Alicia, she reaches over, grabs a gun. And while he's charging up his hand, 
he doesn't notice that she grabbed a gun, points it at him. And so he puts his hand on her face and looks like she melts it. But then she shoots at his face, looks like right in the eyeball. And he's like, Shh. and then Alex, Dragon's partner, she's like still dazed and, you know, passing out. But she's catching just a little bit of their conversation. And he's like, shut out my eye. And she's like, oh, my God. So the girl's dead. They failed. They didn't protect her. She's done. Her hand is here. And then a, a puddle of blood gets bigger and bigger in each panel. And um, bad guy's like, she shut out my eye. She shut out my goddamn eye. Like, we got to go, boss. I hear sirens. And then, like, grab her body. And then as it kind of fades out, and there's some kind of weird phrase that kind of fades out even in the text. It, the indication is that Alex heard them Hear, heard this conversation and they like grab her body and they say where they're going to go but she's not able to really decipher what it was that they said as she falls into unconsciousness so dragon being there for all his strength kind of blew it the girl's dead and didn't work so now they're up and going he's got his face bandaged up and the cops are like well you screwed up um the girl should be dead it's nothing to do you guys screwed up so Dragon and Alex are like kind of contemplating, well, what the hell do we do from here? And I like this shot as Dragon is standing and everyone kind of walks off and leaves and he's just kind of left to kind of ponder what happened. Now, um, Jason Pearson is also drawing this scene. I think for the next while, it's raining all the time. So if you look at the way he rendered these lines on the ground to show rain drops and rippling on the ground with the water, and the colorist added the perfect little ring lighting, even over here on the cop car, on top of the cop car, little raindrops bouncing off the car. It's um, a really good way to draw rain. It's working. I, I really like it. And there's some other examples as we go through this book. Anyway, more story, more characters, the mystery of everything's going on. Like, look, look at this, like, this, like, neon sign and everything that's lit up. But it's got all these little round shapes and scratchy lines, again, to indicate that it's raining outside. It kind of works somehow. It, it really does. Like, the water on the window here. Really neat. Anyway, they get back to it some, some time later. And um, now it's, it's changed up where it's Alex is in the toilet and she's puking her guts out. And Dragon says, you never could handle your liquor. And then he's like, hey, look at this. I've got some paperwork. So they're having a conversation back and forth, trying to work out what they're going to do. And they have kind of a cute little moment. Um, God, Dragon's giant feet and those giant shoes. And then I don't know why it looks like uh, Alex is standing on her tippy toes. But it's good. It's good work. It's good artwork all the time. But anyway, look at this great dramatic shot. We're back at the church. This dramatic angle of the perspective of the cross. Perfect. And the lightning striking down and rain. Bad guy's got his eyes shot out. He's pissed as hell. But look, um, this girl, Alicia, somehow she's still alive. Um, I, I guess he zapped her lightly. She's not dead. And her face isn't melted. Although it looked like she got a face shot. Like, you know, a shot to the face and melted. But... I guess it was just a light zap because there she is and she's actually fine. And they're like, hey, boss. And he's like, what? Like, he's here. And he's like, so this guy, end of issue two, this guy um, who was like with the cops, but he's clearly working with the bad guys. So he's scum. So that's the betrayal. Chapter three, this should be the last book. Another great cover, close up of the eyes, the two of them engaged in battle, flames and everything. Um, now we suddenly are introduced to this, like, I, I, forgive me, car guys, I don't know, is this a 57 Chevy? I think some version of it, but Jason Pearson draws the shit out of this car. I was talking about, I've said multiple times how he can draw anything. He can draw vehicles. He can draw car chases. Now he's drawn a big badass car, the headlights, the way it's inked and illuminated. And then the coloring is obviously helping everywhere. The lighting on the ground. And then you got the lights on the, on the street lights in the background with those scratchy lines to show that it's raining. Um, the little raindrops and water indications on the windshield of the car. It's so fucking good. It's so good. So Dragon and Alex are like, they're going through like their paces and like something's not right. They think the girl's dead. They think they've screwed up, but they keep talking about like, where did they say they were going? You heard them mention a phrase, but you can't make it out. We're not sure. So what could it mean? What could it mean? How could we like, something doesn't add up. 
So again, great shot of the car sitting at a red light. Car looks fantastic. Um, they keep driving, they keep talking. And then there's like a red light that Alex is not paying attention to. And then red light. So this is one of my favorite shots, that car right there. I'm gonna bring it up closer. The way that he has like the front brakes are locking up and the whole car is lurching forward to come to a screeching halt. The, you, to me, you feel the weight of that car. Like it was speeding, it's slowing down to a stop and everything's just lurching forward at an angle. So goddamn good. It works so well. I love it. It just looks good. I, I will never be able to draw vehicles like that. So while they're talking, Dragon suggests a, a, a possible solution to what happened that's so ridiculous that Alex just can't help but start. Like she's got a serious look and then she starts chuckling and then great lettering from the outside of the car. She's laughing. is like, this is the stupidest thing she's ever heard. He's like, it's possible. Like, shut up. She's like, I love you, Dragon. You're so goofy. Um, he's like, what's better than what you come up with? And she's like, see, you're just so goofy. I could kiss you sometimes. And he's like, do tell. She's like, sometimes, you know, suddenly it got serious. Like they're burgeoning theoretical romance, maybe. Rain and everything, another shot. They get close. They're going in for it. And then wait, she's suddenly like, wait, 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 look, look. The church, that says the Church of St. Mary's. He's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, so what? But anyway, basically, they're like, as they're talking, they're like, holy shit, that phrase that I heard, they said, to the church. That's where they were going. I love these shots of the car. Obviously, it's this one panel that they reproduced four times. Why not? Economical drawing, get through a page. Once again, I love this shot. The, the cross in good perspective, the scratchy lines for the rain and that lightning bolt, it works perfectly. It's so good. So anyway, they pull up to the church in the car. Dragon gets out, kicks the fucking door down. Hell yeah. Gets in there. And then I think he uh, he sees all the dead bodies that we saw in the beginning of issue one. All those murdered people. They're like, holy shit. Another great shot of the car. I keep bringing up this fucking ability of his to render water and rain. Like on the side of the car, all, like all the dripping water coming down the side. And like the wavy lines at the front where the headlight and the bumper is. God, it works so well. And then another great car. There's like a freaking limousine, very flat, wide, driving down the street. They still got the girl and um, all the bad guys are kind of screaming at each other. There's problems. This bad guy, he's got some kind of like mind control powers. He can fry your brains or something like that. He, this guy mouthed off to him. So he fried his brains. He's bleeding out his eyes and his mouth. Anyway, as they're going along, up comes Dragon and Alex in the, the hot rod car. They see him. So like, shit, there they go. That's who we're looking for. So they're going to chase after them, car chase. They're going to vaporize the girl, I guess, finally. So the hot rod car opens up and Dragon just jumps out, dives out. I, again, I love the silent panel as he just jumps out to jump onto the limo. He's going to solve this problem. He's going to right this wrong that he wasn't able to fix. Smashes through, giant fist coming through, sends the limo out of control, ramps off another car, flips. Great shot right there. They flip, crashes into a gas station area, which is always like, a, well, you know, a giant explosion is going to be coming, right? So then Alex comes running out and it's not just a giant gun she's carrying, but it's a gun specifically made for Dragon, a giant gun made for his hand because he's huge. Anyway, she's like, yeah, I brought your gun. Let's see if anyone else is hurt. And he's like, God, he's like kind of woozy. And, you know, he just ramped off a car and exploded. But uh, electric can bad guy, he's still coming after him. So... There he is, leaping in the air. And now, again, those inking lines to indicate motion, movement. Very cool. But then Dragon's a little bit more prepared, grabs him by the wrist, socks him right in the face, sends him flying. So then Alex decides she wants to get into the battle. So she jumps, and then bad guy's a close-up of her eye. Now, this is something I, I, I mean, you could see it already. Why Jason Pearson chose to give us a straight on shot of her snatch as she's jumping through the air. It was it just to show us that he can, that he can draw that anatomy. It is really well drawn, but we're just staring right up her fucking twat. Um, I mean, granted she's got pants on, but there's no need for the panel to be that angle. I mean, it's, it's, it's supposed to be, she's cranking her leg back to then, 
do a big, powerful kick to his jaw. And so I personally don't mind. I think it's funny. I think Jason Pearson had a sense of humor and he liked to in interject the sexy and the weird and the the odd and we're just going to do it and you're going to stare at her fucking brown star um, practically. But it didn't need to be drawn that way. I'm glad that he did. I like it. I think it's hilarious, but it's just such, it stood out to me the first time I read this. I'm like, what the fuck is the choice of angle like that for? You don't think Jim Lee would pull off something like that? I don't know. Maybe he did. He did do that Psylocke shot where she was kicking Magneto's head off in uh, X-Men number one. We're all basically looking at the same thing, but that felt like more like an action pose. This feels gratuitous, but I'm here for it. Anyway, we stared up her, up her business for long enough. She kicks him in the face, and then she's still holding Dragon's giant gun. Again, look, it's so well drawn, in perfect perspective. And then so she takes it in mid-jump here. She, now she looks super tiny, puts this giant gun to his chest. She's got to use two fingers to pull the trigger. And then, boom, blows a hole through him, but a great motion. I'm going to bring this up to the camera again. As she goes flying backwards, somehow still has the gun in her hand. And Dragon's like, she's like, God damn it, that's a 66 caliber high powered gun. Because of the recoil, only I can fire it. She's like, you tell him Tonto a little late, Kimosabi. That shit's funny. But um, they get up there, traitorous bad guys getting out of the car. Dragon's still beating the shit out of the guy that Alex just shot. He kicks Dragon right straight in the nuts. We see gas is pouring everywhere. So bad guy jumps on top of Dragon, lights up his electric fist. He's like, going to tell Dragon to die, but then he slams his hand down on the ground where the gas is at, and they both kind of like look at each other, and they both say at the same time, ah, oh, crap. And pff, the whole fucking gas station goes up in flames. So Dragon is basically fireproof, kind of comes crawling out of the fire, and like Alex and the girl are fine. And like, what about the bad guy? And like, there he is. He's still alive, but he's burning to like a zombified corpse. And um, I don't know if he dies or he just passes out. And, you know, maybe he's not dead because they want to bring him back. But his burnt ass body, he's like, I love you. I still love you. I can never take care of my baby. And um, so a girl's crying. And that's basically the end of the battle. And um, so arrest the guy, wrap everything up. We save the girl. She's grateful. Thank you for helping me. Um, blah, blah, blah. We destroyed the shit out of everything. But, you know, the girl's alive. The bad guys are dead. Heroes have won. Adventure is over. Great. So Alex and Dragon, they're having um, a little bit of a conversation. And she's like, you know what? Um, you know, everything kind of worked out okay. But then they're like, oh, shit. Her awesome 57 Chevy hot rod. The hood of the car is burning. And she's like, the paint job on her car is ruined. So she's having a little look of shock. And he's back here with his arms crossed and he's laughing. God, that's a great shot. I've had to draw things like that a couple times where a character is crossing their arms. And it's a little trickier than you'd think to get it exactly right. But anyway, it, it ends on kind of a funny note as the hood of her car. Like, it's not ruined. It's just going to be an expensive fix. And it's a badass car. So anyway, and that's the end of the book. And then you got, uh, this is just a pinup from early issues of Dragon, I think. I don't think this was part of this mini series. I guess I could be wrong. But anyway, so uh, you know what? I loved everything about that. And basically all the stuff with Dragon, the sense of humor, the action, the art, it all just worked out really well. To me, it's it's the best Dragon mini series or branch series of the Dragon that was ever done. You know, se you know, it's only second to the original actual Dragon book itself where Eric Larson is just showing everybody how it's done. But um, I enjoyed the hell out of this, and um, again, this is another long video. This is only three issues. I did recently go over, as I was talking about this Ocean book, which was six issues, and I uh, went on for an hour, so this is about 43 minutes right now. So, But you know what? These collected books, I love them. Carl Story's great inker. Is he still alive? Is he still inking? I, maybe he's older right now. I don't know. Love his inks. Um, you know, rest in peace to Jason Pearson. Uh, you know, we, we didn't get enough of his work. It's just, there's not enough of it out there. And honestly, it's like, there's never enough when somebody parts, you know, this world earlier than they should have, because all the work they could have done, um, that we'll never get to see. So that's why I say like everybody, like if you're working on something, go make it. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Go make your goddamn work. Go make your book. 
as you know, as I like to try to remember to say to everybody, go make your comics. Go make them. That's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.